the Kabbalistic story to me, I, I really like the idea of the um, the breaking of the shells of the sparks and raising the sparks from their shells. Mm. This is a Kabbalistic idea that our soul or like our fiery essence, right, is literally ensnared and trapped within the body. If you read a, any Gnosticism, a lot of yeah. Gnosticism doesn't have great things to say about the body, but it doesn't mean to disregard the body. Right. It means that we must learn to separate the subtle from the gross, the fire from the earth. And when we can do that, fire ascends to fire and earth descends to earth. This goes into Hermetics a little bit. You know, Hermes and the Emerald Tablet of Hermes talks about separating the subtle from the gross, you know, the fire from the earth. And gently, with great ingenuity, it rises. It rises from the earth to the heavens and descends again to earth. That's the wow. story. That's the story of freeing the sparks from the, their, uh, their dense material cases. And to do that is to develop like that esoteric perception and really start like breathing in and activating the chi and realizing the true self, the self behind it all. And, you know, Ayurvedic, they would call that Shiva, Shiva, or, um, yeah, the Shiva principle, which is the mm -hmm. empty superior self where all is manifested inside of. And he's oh. the destroyer. Why is Shiva the destroyer? Right. I don't think, like, think of him as the destroyer. I like to think of Shiva as the dissolver. When we are identified with the superior self, the most subtle, the most subtle energy in the being, and building a perception and awareness of that, when we start breathing into that and allowing it to permeate the flesh, like we literally will watch the flesh transform and dissolve itself on like a very dense level, freeing our like you know our divine energy in a sense to move and flow upward and as we do that you know the mother the fires from the center of the earth rise up through us call it kundalini if you want like mm -hmm. earth is the womb and there's fires in the center of the earth like the emerald tablets of thoth talk about rising the eternal flower of fire from the center of the earth and calling it up and bathing in the flames and as we bathe in those flames and we allow and we, we disidentify with the body. We understand the body is an emanation of a more superior self. And we allow the body to become formless once more. And in doing so, mm. we separate the subtle from the gross. And, it, and in that, we rise, we rise the kundalini, right? And it ascends from the earth to the heavens and descends again to earth. And in doing so, it creates that merkaba where the perfect pattern emerges. This mm -hmm. is getting really deep. So the perfect pattern is the operation of the sun, the most like cryptic and, you know, legendary esoteric document probably is the Emerald Tablet of Hermes. And the Emerald Tablet of Hermes is there to describe the perfect pattern, the operation of the sun. And mm -hmm. by this pattern, many wonderful um things will be created and done it says in the emerald tablet oh my goodness pattern is a triplicity you can think about it as in the sense that it rises right from the earth to the heavens that's like fire ascending right and that's like this positive electric polarity of the fire breaking through breaking from its bondage and then it descends again and in that descent, it's like the, the magnetic polarity. It's a downward triangle, right? And it's combining positive polarity and negative polarity into one, into a two-way flow, per se, right? And in the middle, the sun is born. In the middle of the divine father above and divine mother below, oh, right. the sun is born. And the sun is born in the heart, right? And from there, God emanates outward. And the sun state is created. You see, the sun is both magnetic, electric, and dia, uh, dielectric. It is literally the perfect combination of all three. Um, and that's what that's what alchemy is in in essence. 
That's how we transmute lead into gold is we take two seemingly opposite elements and bring them into one, one new thing, the sun, if that makes sense. We take, you know, the, the dense material and the spiritual and we combine them into one element, a new element, a synthesis, right? That's what alchemy is, is this, is this combination yeah. of seemingly opposites. Um, and that's what that perfect pattern represents. And that perfect pattern, that's seen in the Tesla coil and limitless energy. That perfect pattern is seen in like ideas for perpetual motion. That perfect pattern is why the sun burns all day, every day, basically forever. Who knows? Mm -hmm. It's the perfect pattern. Oh, and through goodness. the perfect pattern, you become self-generated, meaning that um, you are a toroidal field where you are literally burning and transmuting. You're pulling in everything around you and transmuting it into light and feeding on yourself. You're self-generated. You are literally an internal perpetual battery because you aren't needing to feed on any other polarity or needing something against you. You, you are self-contained. This is what so much of the occult and esoteric philosophy is pointing towards is self-generation. It's called the sun state. And we just dove really deep. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, that's truly immortality. That is immortality. That's awakening the immortal body. Uh, mm -hmm. Because literally your ego gets carved onto the face of infinity. Because you are creating this immortal body of esoteric energy that's in perfect harmony. And when it hits that perfect harmony, it's in perpetual self-generation meaning it is immortal when this physical vessel dies or at, i don't even know at that level right. you could probably choose like when you want to leave this body and you will leave it with all your memories and ego intact you'll like you know the next planes are open to you that's um i've read that that's what's called the rainbow body have you ever yeah. in tibetan buddhism yes um, some they, rainbow they, body. Yeah. Some call it the, the Merkava or the chariot okay. of fire from the so Bible. It has many names. There's many names for it. The sun state, the solar body. Uh, you know, the native uh Anishwabe people call it the golden man, you know. Oh my uh, God. yeah, like every single culture has like if we look at ancient depictions of Buddha, he's got swastikas of self-generation yeah. sun symbols on his forehead on his palms of his hands, on his chest. And he's sitting wow. in a glowing field of light, twofold, a twofold field of glowing light. If we look at ancient depictions of Krishna, he's glowing. Mm -hmm. Christ, he's glowing, right? Zoroaster, he's glowing. He has wings, he's flying. Like we got Hermes, that's what immortality is. That's literally what Hermes, that's all he talks about. The, the, like this is nothing new. I believe back in like, you know, Atlantis days, there used to be tribes of glowing ones. This used to be very common knowledge. The goal of man was very well known. That's interesting. So we forgot? Hmm. Finish, please, please swallow. We didn't forget necessarily. We did forget. But it wasn't so much as our doing. You see, there's yugas out here. There's great turnings of the wheel. Mm -hmm. With those turnings of the wheel, you know, those, the masters back in Atlantis days, they knew that the turning of the wheel was coming, that the golden age was coming to an end. And Earth is on cycles, you know, like every 13,000 years, cataclysmic things happen on the face of Earth. Okay? There's nothing we can do. Nothing we can do about it. Okay. But it's nothing to be to be scared of, actually. Right. Right. The cataclysmic changes are a consequence of the solar system and Earth entering new areas of, you know, call it cosmic energy, or um, I like to think of it as etheric energy. Right now on Earth, we are re-entering and leaving the the Iron Age or the Dark Age. 
And the Dark Age was characterized by a massive descent in consciousness. And that massive descent in consciousness was not the doing of man necessarily. Although, you know, it might be the karma of how some of the black priests once used the magic. But I would just say it's on the greater cycle. It's on that procession of the equinox, the great year, right? And in that descent of consciousness, what kind of catal like catalyzed it was a abandoning of the sacred mists of earth. The ancient Celtics, you know, like Europe or England used to be the like the most sacred land ever. And around a few thousand years ago, you know, the Druids, there's stories of them saying that the sacred mists are becoming thin and leaving earth, right? The etheric energy on earth is not so high. So therefore consciousness cannot resonate at those higher frequencies wow. where that Christ consciousness is activated and actualized in the being. So as the etheric energy was depleted on earth as as the solar system moved through different phases and cycles in the stars consciousness descended with that descent of consciousness there was an as within so without kind of reaction in the sense that massive earth changes occurred as massive consciousness changes occurred right. and those earth changes you know would have been like caused by you know different waves of cosmic energy blasting earth and our sun you know and that causing ice ages or the end of an ice age right and when the ice age ended atlantis sunk the poles shifted right yes. the water was rose very hundreds and very hundreds dramatic of right Ooh. right but the, the 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 interesting thing is there's a younger dryas period after the after the end of the first ice age, there was a mini golden age again, about 11,600 years ago. And in that time, the masters of wisdom from ancient Atlantis essentially foresaw the descent in consciousness coming into the Kali Yuga. And what they did is they went to all these barbaric or primitive tribes, whether that's the Sumerians, whether that's the, the Celtic, whether that's the Egyptians, whether that's the Incas, Native whether that's the, Adam, the Native oh. Americans, the Shwabe, right. you know, the Hopi. And what they did is they brought the esoteric knowledge to these people and they interwove it into their cultural, spiritual and environmental, you know, like places. Um, so as to leave time capsules for the ancient knowledge. Oh, so wow. if you look at all the pyramids in the same exact formation on many different continents. Why are the same symbols being used, right? Why is it that there's so many similarities in the, in the, like, yeah, in so much. And basically these masters of wisdom, what they did was they brought the knowledge to these tribes and all of a sudden agriculture was born out of nowhere. Like right. historically, Think that history started like six thousand years ago now graham hancock is coming in and like now nah, look at this instance obviously this shit started like twelve thousand years ago at right. the least. you know look at this temple in turkey yes yeah exactly look at this temple in turkey are you kidding me like that shit that what and he, his argument is like what you think they just invented agriculture out of nowhere right you think that they just started building like megaliths monuments so massive we still can't build them today right. moving hundreds and hundreds of tons tons of a single stone single obelisks that we, that we yes. move right now as pillars right. and pyramids right like it's like oh that just happened yeah some hunters and gatherers just got together and like you know just did that they and then they set up all these astrological and astronomy temples to observe the stars like like all this knowledge with came the precision out of no that they did too with yeah with precision such precision like the 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 pyramids being built literally like 0 0.01 percent from true off true north like such right. precision we may not be able to match that kind of building standard even today That's and right. it's like and it's like yeah these were savages wisdom <laughs> came and created time capsules in all these nations and that's why we had a mini golden age for a thousand years there and in that mini golden age essentially what what occurred was the masters of wisdom the seven 
basically like divinities. They were gods on earth. You could you could say they were they were completely magical, like full on Kabbalists, immortals. You know, they were the sons of light. Okay. And this is why Votan or Odin or Osiris, I think they're all the same exact man. This, oh, wow. this God that would come to these primitive people and teach them magic and teach them agriculture and teach them civilization and teach them building, you know, and bring them out of the, 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 the dregs of ignorance, uh, essentially. The Emerald Tablets of Thoth talk about this, as well as quite a few other different uh, ancient texts. And from there, essentially, they planted the seeds that gave birth two messiahs that would spring up in different cultures from time to time whether that mm -hmm. was buddha or krishna or zora mm -hmm. you know or christ or abraham or uh, moses or yeah basically all these guys were messiahs they were initiated into the time capsule mystery schools and through that initiation they were essentially seeds planted mm -hmm. by the great spirit you know to continue the knowledge forward, to keep it alive until this time of awakening, which we're in now, where the etheric energy has returned to earth and that Christ consciousness is available to us as like, but now we're just in this grand, you know, this grand mystery as all the information's coming out of, you know, really piecing it together and creating the new organic script, writing our own holy books per se. <laughs> Whoa. So that's my understanding of the story. <laughs> okay. So yeah. combination of trauma and um, cyclic, uh, cyclic events. Trauma, yeah. karma, and cycles. <laughs> yeah. That's what I would attribute it to, definitely. Wow, what a combination. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe they're all the same thing. <laughs> maybe. That's right. Who are Karma we is the law of cause and effect. Rhythm is the law of cycles. And um, trauma is the law of polarity, in a sense. <laughs> so, yeah. Tell me about that one, the last one. The law, law of polarity. polarity. Mm -hmm. Well, the law of polarity states that all co things that come into being have an equal and opposite pole. So, the law of polarity to the ancient hermeticists was the key to internal and mental alchemy. Alchemy being that of the art of polarization in this sense, of the capacity to influence one's internal state of vibrational resonance. Right. So there's the law of vibration, right, which is the second law. And the law of vibration states that all things are moving, all things are in motion and vibrating, even from the most dense matter possible that is moving so slow and vibrating so slow it appears still, to the spiritual matter or the fastest moving particle, which is moving so fast and so small that it also appears still. And there's a spectrum. And all things exist on a spectrum. Where does hot end and cold begin? Where does hate end and love begin? Where does sorrow end and joy begin? Right? Where uh -huh. does bad end and good begin? They're not different things. They are opposites, but they are representative of the poles. You see, all things are on a spectrum. And this law of polarity is seen everywhere inside of us. We exist as tetrapolar beings. Meaning that like the right side of our head is, I forget if it's positive or negative, And then our right foot is opposite, left side, opposite, bottom foot, opposite. Oh and this goodness. polarization creates a toroidal field, right? Um, polarity is seen literally in everything, spiritual from matter, man from woman, you know, right. electric, like the electron from the proton, right? So Polarity is seen in everything. It's actually how matter or existence exists. If the first thing was created, 
in order for something to be created, it had to be created against something or else how would we know it to be any different from the all that is? If the mm -hmm. all, the entire universe sent forth a creation in order for that creation to be seen and needed to have its opposite pole and needed to have a backdrop in order for light to exist, darkness had to be behind it. Darkness had to contrast it so we could actually identify light as its own unique creation. And from there, you know, the law of polarity reigns supreme. And the law of polarity is a really powerful uh, one to understand. Um, the law of polarity plus the law of rhythm together, you know, is the... Uh, is, is what creates the ages the golden age which is a polarity of the dark age right well the pendulum's got to swing the cycle has to turn there's a law of rhythm there's a law of ebb and flow of up and down the tides come in and then they go out the golden age dawns and then it flows away life is birthed and then it begins to die you know yeah. it's yeah so it, you see how they all kind of work together there that's that's you just said a phrase my mom used to say a lot. We we start dying the minute we are born. I don't know about that. <laughs> but well, she meant she meant that rise and and yeah and fall also. Crap. Wow. Yeah. Wow. We dove in 